What's up guys, it's Cash here, back with another video. Today I'm going to teach you how to make an animation and play it in Roblox Studio. So let's get started. First of all, you want to create an animation. Now, to do this, you need to have a rig. And to create a rig, you want to go over here to Avatar, Rig Builder, and then create a new rig with the rig type. So you can choose R15 or R6. I prefer R6 because it's just easier to animate with. Uh, but this is going to change depending on what your game settings are. So if you go to your game settings and you go to avatar, uh, you want to animate with the avatar type that's here. So if it says R6 here, you want to use R6. But if it says R15, you want to use R15. Um, you can also change this, but it's going to change uh, some of your game stuff. So just so you know, these rigs and avatar types, they have two like different body types, and I'll show you. So if we insert R15, as you can see, this one has 15 body parts, and this one has six well not really six uh it has seven but it has six joints okay and this one has 15 joints so if you're going to use r6 make sure you're playing as r6 and if you're using r15 make sure you're playing as r15 that's all you gotta know okay so right here we have the r6 rig that we're going to be animating with just because it's easier to animate with six limbs and what we're going to do is set the primary part to the humanoid root part uh, because sometimes it automatically sets it to head for some reason, which it's not supposed to do. But yeah, that fixes that problem. Uh, then we can open the animation editor right here. And we can click on the rig. Then we can create an animation. I'll just call this tutorial animation. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is create a keyframe for the torso. And actually I'm just going to create a keyframe for all of these body parts. So I'll just go ahead and add these in. So now that we have a keyframe for everything, uh, other animations won't bug it out. So if you have a keyframe for one um, of these joints, it kind of just overwrites any other animations that are playing, such as the walk animation. So now that we have that, I'm going to create another keyframe at the very end. And this one, I'm just going to kind of just mess with it. Uh, it's just going to be a really blank, messy animation like this and he's kind of just going to get disoriented and the head really cool so now we have this really weird animation but yeah that's basically it if we press play as you can see it just disorients we can add some easing to it, so if we select all these keyframes right here by clicking this white one right here, and then right clicking, easing style, we can set it to cubic, and then as you can see it kind of smooths it out. We can also change the easing direction to in out to make it really smooth. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. Now these body parts will go back to normal afterwards, so what I like to do is save this one. And then I like to copy the end keyframe. And then I like to create a new animation. So just create new. I'll call this tutorial anim2. And just paste in the keyframes by right clicking pasting or just control V. Okay, so now that we have this, I like to set it to looped. And now this one will just be the like final keyframe. Okay. Now I can save this one. And we can go ahead and close out of the animation editor. We're all done making the animation. Okay. Now if we open up the rig and go to animation saves, we can see the animations here. We want to go ahead and select both of these by pressing shift and clicking them. And then we want to set the priority to action. This will make them overwrite any other animations playing and they'll just like take priority. Okay. Now we can go ahead and right click, save both of them to Roblox. Uh, I'll just make sure uh, you save them to the right creator of the game. So if you, the game's on your profile, save it to you. So it should say me. But if it's in a group, then make sure you save it to the group. So if my game is in Cash's Kingdom, I'd save it to Cash's Kingdom. But since it's in my just over my profile, I'll just save it to me. Then you can save it and then copy the ID right here. Once you copy the ID, click on the animation saves and just create an animation. And we'll just name it the one that we saved. Tutorial Anim 2. And I'll paste in the animation ID. Okay. 
Then we can also duplicate this and do the exact same process for the other animation. Copy the ID and paste it in here. So now that we have our animations finished, what we can do is drag these into the rig. Then we want to make a script that can play them. So let's go ahead and create a script. I'm going to define the rig. And then I'm going to define the humanoid. So the humanoid is what's going to be playing the animations, but more specifically the humanoid's animator. And the humanoid's animator will load the animations for it and it just contains all of it. So what we want to do is get the tutorial animation and the tutorial animation 2 objects. So let's go ahead and define those. So these animations right here, uh, they're just like placeholders for the animation track that we have to load. And it basically just gives the humanoid or the animator the information that we need to load it. So to create the tracks, we actually can get the animator by doing local animator equals humanoid wiper child animator. And then we can create a tutorial anim track one by doing animator load animation tutorial anim one. Now, if we just copy this and paste it here, we can do the same thing for tutorial animation two. Now these tracks right here are the actual animations. These are actually what we can play and we can like change the speed of and connect events and stuff. These ones are preset animations before loading. So they haven't been loaded in yet. Okay. And then all of this stuff right here is just the uh, like player model stuff. Okay. Now we can actually script the animations. So what we'll do is we'll just wait three seconds and then we will play the animation track one. So if we go ahead and run the script, you'll see that the animation plays, but nothing else happens after we play it besides it going back to normal, as you can see. So what we can do is set tutorial anim track two to play after tutorial anim track one is finished. So uh, tutorial anim track one, I think it's it's not stopped, but it's um, let's see, ended. Yeah, ended. Wait. Uh, so what we're doing right here is we're waiting for this event to fire, and the rest of the script will be suspended, and it'll just wait until this event is fired. So it's just going to wait until the track ends, and then we'll play the second one. So as you can see, it kind of did that, and that was kind of bad. So the way that we can fix that is, if we look at this right here, where it says ended, as you can see, it says fires when the animation track is completely done moving anything in the world. The animation is finished playing, the fade out is finished, and the subject is in a neutral pose. So we don't want to use this. Instead, we can easily just do task.wait, tutorial animation track one dot length and this will return the length so if we just run it now it's going to wait until the first one is completely finished but not really like fading out and yeah now we're just stuck in this post forever then we can wait three more seconds and we can go ahead and tutorial anime track two stop so let's go ahead and play this now And yeah, it just does that and it's stuck in the pose and then it goes back to normal. Awesome. So now that we know how to do this on an NPC, you might be wondering how do we do this on an actual player? Well, it's quite simple. What we're going to do is go into starter character scripts. So the script automatically goes into the character and we can easily just copy these right here, these uh, animations and just paste them there. Now, if we press play, we can actually do the exact same thing with the NPC, except it'll be in our player. Uh, just note though, you don't really want to play animations on the server as it can be laggy. Um, but they are good for like certain things if you like want to replicate uh, the positions on the server. For stuff like the player animations though, you really don't want to use them on the server. So we can actually change the run context 
the client and then press play again and it'll work the exact same except as you can see it says it's going to wait for humanoid because it's running in starter character scripts which is an issue so you can just keep this on the server if you want anyways guys that's it for this video if you want another video like this one make sure to leave a like and a comment down below let me know what you guys want to see i'll see you guys in the next video peace